The Democratic Republic of Congo sits atop extremely rich deposits of cobalt, a key metal used in modern technology. Congo is estimated to hold around half of the world's known cobalt reserves, around 3.4 million metric tons, located primarily in the southern copper belt. Cobalt found its way into the global spotlight due to its importance in lithium-ion batteries. These high-capacity batteries power much of today's technology, from smartphones to laptops and electric vehicles. Cobalt is a vital component that allows lithium-ion batteries to efficiently store and discharge energy over many charge cycles. One region that saw a cobalt rush was around the city of Kolwezi in southern Congo. For many years, industrial mining companies extracted cobalt as a byproduct of large-scale copper mining in the region. In 2014, everything changed when a man digging in his backyard in the town of Kasulo, near Kolwezi, discovered something unusual in the soil. Upon taking samples to local traders, he learned this was no ordinary finding. Tests revealed an unusually pure deposit of cobalt ore, known as heterogenite, hidden beneath the surface. Word of the discovery spread quickly among Kasulo's residents, many living in poverty with few work opportunities. This seemingly chance discovery ignited a frenzy of artisanal mining activity that would have repercussions for years to come. Within weeks, over 2,000 crusures, or informal miners, had moved to the area to dig for riches. The rains unleashed what miners called the good times, as money and opportunity appeared where before there had only been hardship. But this newly discovered source of cobalt was about to place locals on a collision course with the multi-billion dollar tech industry half a world away. Cobalt mining in the Democratic Republic of the Congo today primarily occurs through two main systems large-scale industrial operations and small-scale artisanal mining. Industrial mines in southern provinces like Lualaba and Huat Katanga are operated by major mining companies such as Glencore, China Molybdenum, and Shamaf. They utilize heavy earth-moving and rock-excavating equipment across vast, open-pit mines that can stretch for kilometers. Though dangerous work, conditions at industrial sites are safer than artisanal mining due to mandatory safety infrastructure, protective gear, and medical facilities. Workers typically earn a living wage. However, artisanal miners have come to outnumber industrial workers in Congo's Copper Belt region. Known locally as crusures, these individual miners, or small informal teams, utilize simple hand tools like hammers, chisels, shovels, and sieves to extract minerals. Many work in abandoned tailings piles from previous mining activity or dig their own narrow shafts and tunnels, often without any roof supports or ventilation. Accidents from collapse, landslides, toxic gas exposure, and mining-induced water pollution have become tragically common for artisanal miners. Violence from armed militias and unscrupulous government officials seeking to control the valuable minerals trade also plagues the sector. One of the deadliest incidents occurred in 2019, when a landslide at the Komodo Copper Company mine killed over 40 crusures who had entered the site illegally. The precarious nature of artisanal mining stems from a combination of economic hardships and social factors in Congo. With over 80% of the population working informally in low-wage jobs or subsistence agriculture, rural families rely on children as young as five or six years old to supplement their meager incomes through collecting and rudimentary sorting of minerals. <laughs> Mining offers one of the only opportunities to earn cash income, despite grave risks to health and safety. Chronic poverty and lack of alternatives ultimately drive many Congolese into the dangerous tunnels. Women also crudely wash cobalt-rich rocks alongside their children and infants, exposing themselves to heavy metal pollution with few protective supplies or precautions. Several international NGOs operate in South Kivu, Lualaba, Huat Katanga, and other provinces seeking to improve dire conditions for crusures and their communities. Groups like PACT, IMPACT, and Baptist World Aid distribute basic safety equipment, provide first aid clinics, and fund food programs. Faith-based initiatives focus on protecting child laborers and supporting educational alternatives. The Fair Cobalt Alliance now facilitates sourcing traceability and ethical standards for growing artisanal mining cooperatives. However, given the sector's immense informal scale, challenges to formalization and risk mitigation remain immense. 
The growing demand for cobalt has direct implications for the multi-billion dollar tech industry. Major companies rely on Congo for over 60% of their cobalt supply. However, most cobalt is not mined directly by tech firms. It changes many hands before reaching their factories. Companies like Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, and others purchase cobalt from trading houses based in China, Singapore, and elsewhere. These buyers in turn source from a complex web of industrial mining firms, small traders, and artisanal miners in Congo. Given these multiple layers, oversight of working conditions on the ground has proved challenging. In 2016, disturbing reports from Amnesty International tied specific cobalt shipments exported from the ports of Tanzania and South Africa back to major tech brands, despite apparent links to child labor and safety issues at informal mining sites. The following year, an undercover investigation by UK broadcaster Sky News showed children as young as seven years old manually dredging ore, crushing rocks, and sorting minerals with their bare hands, facing grueling labor and constant risks of injury or toxic dust inhalation. While some firms like Apple promised audits and pledges to source only from industrial operations with strict controls, subsequent monitoring continued finding ties to artisanal mining in Congo, where laws, wages, and safety standards are seldom enforced. Progress has been slow in extricating global supply chains from dependency on Congo's vast informal sector where abuses regularly take place. Frustrated by the slow pace of voluntary change, international lawyers began pursuing legal action. In late 2019, a landmark lawsuit was filed against Apple, Google, Tesla, and others, alleging complicity in the deaths and injuries of Congolese children mining cobalt used in their products. The legal complaint argues the companies engage in non-feasance by not ensuring supply chain accountability. It aims to establish whether firms meet due diligence standards on human rights and explore options for remedy or damages paid to victims. This case represents a new front in making multinationals responsible for overseas labor conditions. The legal challenges place additional pressure as demands for transparency and ethics in complex global supply chains continue intensifying worldwide. As consumers, what do you think is our role in driving change? We cannot simply cancel Apple or any other big tech companies that we have come to depend on. Would refusing to buy products from companies that default be the solution? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below, and consider hitting the like button if you're enjoying this video so far. The lawsuits and public scrutiny forced companies to implement more robust responses to sourcing concerns. Apple, for example, has tried to trace its global cobalt supply directly to industrial mines rather than artisanal sources. It supports responsible mineral initiatives and joined the Responsible Minerals Assurance process in 2016. Other tech brands like Dell, HP, and Microsoft have made efforts to survey suppliers, set standards, and publish annual reports on mineral sourcing policies. The companies emphasize programs to formalize artisanal mining channels, provide safety gear, and establish educational opportunities for local communities. However, Traceability challenges remain significant given the complexity of networks and the number of intermediaries involved. Critics argue voluntary auditing is insufficient and that companies continue profiting from cheap Congolese cobalt without ensuring fair treatment of workers. There are also questions about whether firms can fully sever ties to informal mining, or if instead, they carry a duty to promote formalization and improve the livelihoods of all miners in their supply chains. Debates continue around the extent of corporate responsibility for human rights beyond direct employees. Tech companies claim limitations to influence upstream suppliers, while lawsuits assert a reasonable standard of care and accountability. Moving forward, most agree a multi-stakeholder approach is needed, but coordination between companies, governments, regulators, and advocacy groups has proved difficult. Some argue mandatory human rights due diligence laws may be required to incentivize systemic reform across the sector. For their part, companies insist ongoing engagement, audits, capacity building, and chemical substitutions for cobalt-free batteries represent reasonable efforts to balance business priorities with creating more sustainable livelihoods. But for many critics and activists, more robust measures are still required. While efforts have increased to address supply chain risks, immense challenges remain in formalizing the artisanal mining sector in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The majority of cobalt production still comes from hundreds of thousands of informal diggers working without proper oversight. 
Existing miners' associations have struggled to properly register and certify all cursures. Poverty and lack of alternatives continue driving people into illegal operations. Complex land disputes and conflict mineral issues from past wars also undermine formalization efforts. Going forward, a multi-pronged approach involving all stakeholders will be needed. Companies must pursue further transparency in their entire supply chains, targeting undertaking direct initiatives to enhance safety, livelihoods, and environmental standards for artisanal miners. National governments have a key role in establishing clear policies, enhancing the rule of law, and providing education and technical training programs. International organizations can facilitate partnership platforms and responsible sourcing frameworks. Local communities and NGOs are pivotal in monitoring conditions and ensuring farmer and artisanal needs are addressed. Advocates encourage fostering mining cooperatives and alternative economic opportunities. Consumers also hold influence in demanding well-sourced materials. Public reporting and inclusive dialogue between all parties will be important to jointly solve these complex challenges at the intersection of business, human rights, and environmental protection. With commitment and coordination, it may be possible to develop responsible artisanal mining models that preserve livelihoods while preventing harm. With open and accountable collaboration, a more ethical mineral supply chain can be built to the benefit of global technology users and Congolese miners alike. This issue underscores the intricate trade-offs presented when technological advancement relies on extracting scarce natural resources from poor, developing regions. On one hand, mines create much-needed jobs and have lifted many Congolese from extreme poverty. However, social and environmental costs have also been great, without sufficient protections and formalized systems. The conflict over cobalt mining in the Democratic Republic of the Congo highlights the fundamental tension between economic progress and human welfare. On one side, industries fueling the technology revolution demand large quantities of scarce resources, generating wealth. However, profit motives alone will not lift vulnerable mining communities out of poverty if basic decent working standards and environmental protections are not required. Despite some efforts, voluntary corporate responsibility has thus far failed to curb all abuses. This situation shows that without accountability, global capitalism can exploit the very populations powering industry growth. While firms focus on efficient operations and returns, externalizing social or ecological costs elsewhere, lasting harm can result. Going forward, all sides must acknowledge limitations and compromises will be needed. Companies depend on lawmakers to compel certain oversight through regulation where self-interest falls short. Meanwhile, disadvantaged groups require the ability to assert their rights and demand redress for violations via open legal channels or United Nations mechanisms. Only through balancing these perspectives can sustainable solutions emerge. If a more just system is to emerge, both top-down rules and bottom-up pressure must work in concert to fairly distribute both benefits and responsibilities of an ever more interconnected world. The alternative risks undermining the social licenses upon which open economies are founded. Out of this ongoing challenge may yet come wiser, more inclusive models of shared progress. But meaningful change depends on acknowledging difficult realities, not dismissing them. By facing hard truths together, new paths may open. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching, and consider watching our other videos right here.